Hey everyone, Richard Phillips back at you with some more modern action. Today we have the first of hopefully many decks that were submitted by you. So someone submitted this idea on the email address that I have below here. I'm starting to take email submissions of ideas and deck lists that people find interesting. And the idea that was sent to me was black white smallpox control where instead of it being a black white smallpox using rack elements which some people have done this is simply just trying to win the game through combat and through planeswalker planeswalker ultimates our win con is really kaya or zob usurper trying to ultimate which is not too hard to do with her uh to win the game uh, combined with lingering souls and nether spirit beatdowns uh the deck is trying to resolve a liliana the veil and then use smallpox as a way to prevent our opponent from getting back into the game and then eventually win using our planeswalkers um obviously this is certainly not an aggro build like we don't have any racks or any cards like that in the deck so we you know it's going to have to draw out the game quite a bit to win um but it's really good against a lot of creature strategies um and a lot of combo decks are going to have a lot of trouble fighting through hand hate and then liliana resolving uh we also are able to utilize our lands pretty effectively we've got some man lands uh castle Lochtwain to draw cards uh, and then obviously we have the flagstones plus urborg and the fetid heath um, plan so that our smallpox doesn't actually put us back cards uh, we can recoup our land uh, by sacrificing the flagstones uh, the sideboard has some cards for like mid-rangey matchups it's got gideons which are excellent um, also you know, prevents us from losing the game against certain matchups can be super important uh, more Kaya's Guiles. I think this card's really good, but it's not great against everything. Like, obviously, it's not great against like card decks like Tron or Amulet Titan or things like that. So we have a couple more access uh, copies in the sideboard that we need. Anguished on making to get rid of Troubled Permanence. It's not a great card, but I need a way to get rid of, you know, like opposing Gideon or something like that. Um, yeah, obviously more things than that, but uh, certainly just a couple of catch-alls is good in a 75, especially for a control deck, because we can't win the game very quickly. Um, Celestial Purge to get rid of Blood Moon, which can be a serious problem since we just have the one planes in the whole deck. Um, and, um, you know, other things like that. Stony Silence for Tron and other uh, creature matchups like a Hammer Time and things like that. Uh, with that, we will jump into a league. Once again, just a reminder to like and subscribe to the channel, looking to get to that 1,000 subscribers. And if you have a deck list or an idea that you would like to see on the channel, please email me in the um, with the email address below, flankattack27mtgo at gmail.com. Thanks, everyone. See you at the beginning of round one. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to round number one. Our opponent is an Ubosh deck, so that either means they're Ponza or they're Mono Red. And the, the difference between them being Ponza and them being Mono Red changes whether or not this is a mulligan decision or not. Against Mono Red, I think I'm keeping this hand. Uh, against Ponza, this is probably just an automatic loss. So I guess we need to ask ourselves if Ponza is still playing obosh as a companion i personally haven't seen that in quite a while all of the good cards in ponza are three cmc or and one three and five cmc i guess um but they've moved away from it in general so i'm gonna i think keep this hand we're on the draw we can operate pretty well on one additional mana um we're probably just gonna have to you know not use the smallpox but inquisition into fatal push with cling the dust so we have something to do even if we miss our land drops i'm gonna keep this hand i might be punished obviously for that uh, but the opponent also could be punished for a greedy keep if they play like okay so it is mono red all right and they don't have a mono uh turn one play which is excellent all right we unfortunately did not draw land but if they're not doing anything then we're gonna inquisition them Lava Dart, Lava Dart. Right, we're definitely taking Bone Crusher Giant. None of the rest of their hand really does anything. Blast Zone's pretty good against us, though, for sure. We can cycle the Cling to Dust next turn, so we'll have two looks at a land. All right, we hit a land. Great. Um... Yeah, we could probably just main phase cling to dust here trying to look for a 
So maybe I should have done that before I played my land for the turn. Yeah, I should have done that before I played the land for the turn. That's all right. We were not punished. Because uh, some of our white sources enter tapped, and that would be really bad if we if we would have drawn a tap land there and not been able to curve out here. All right, but we were fortunately not punished. Perfect. Uh, so we can just go ahead and play Liliana and uptick. Uh, and force the opponent to, like, bolt it or something. I think that seems good. I mean, we need to start getting going here. We can get rid of... We can honestly even get rid of a fatal push here. Or we can get rid of the smallpox. Smallpox does damage to both of us. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. Fine. And the opponent might bolt it plus... Um... Okay, Flame Slash is not a very good card. But hopefully the opponent feels like they need to bolt and lava dart the Liliana. So the Liliana will have saved us, you know, four damage or whatever. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. All right, cool. So the, definitely a good good Liliana. Um, next turn we can play Kaya, and we can exile the Lava Dart plus the Bone Crusher Giant. Cool, and we can do it without taking damage. That's great. So now the opponent can sacrifice a mountain to deal a damage to the Kaya and then bolt the Kaya, but then they're pretty much out of gas. So I think think this is good for us. And then this will turn on eventually our cling to die. Oh no, they just let it go. Okay, cool. They might try to tick up the blast zone here. That might be their plan. So this is what I was saying. It was like, this hand's really good against mono red, <laughs> if that's what they were playing. Uh, this looks like it's like a medium red. It's not an aggro mono red deck, which is interesting to note. Um, it certainly means that we have to be worry about Blood Moon game too. It looks like they're going to start ticking up Blast Zone. Okay. Oh, they they didn't they didn't f use the mana. So that was a... a, a Magic Online user interface issue where they they just ticked up the blast zone. Yeah. Okay. So now they have to change what they want to do. Now they're now they're gonna have to lava dart it too. So now they're gonna have to main phase cast a lava dart here, and then they'll probably put Obosh in their hand. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I think we've gone through every card we know. Yeah. They don't, we don't know any cards that they have. And they're not putting Obosh in their hand, which is weird. Probably should. Um, I guess the Inquisition isn't getting any better. Oh, maybe that's not true. All right, let's just hold it one more turn. All right, so now we just need to draw, like, a Lingering Souls is probably our best draw in the deck. All right, and they're not putting Obosh in their hand. I, they might have forgotten about it. All right, I get the, at this point, we might as well Inquisition, get whatever their last card is out of their hand. Oh, sure. Okay. All right, at the end of the turn, I guess we'll crack the silent clearing. Um, if they have, for some reason, some sort of weird haste creature or three mana card, I want to hold up the silent clearing activation as a revolt for the fatal push. But yeah, we're certainly in the driver's seat here already, game one. We can start looking at our sideboard for game two. Uh, Purge is in, Gideon's in, Kaya's in. Probably look like that. Uh, could consider the Bantu's Last Reckoning. We'll probably take out the Thought Seizes. Um, yeah, probably take out the Thought Seizes. Okay, they just put Obosh in their hand, sure.
All right, and then I guess I'll just go ahead and crack this now. Oh, perfect, Lingering Souls. It's exactly what we we're looking for. And a Cling to Dust, okay. So we will play the Lingering Souls. Cool. And then the opponent can play Obosh, and we can make our opponent sacrifice the Obosh and gain some life or make another Spirit. Sure. Cool. Alright, so we'll just make our opponent sacrifice and create a 1 1. And then we're going to flash back to Lingering Souls. Yeah, Kaya's Guile is a really good card. Cool. All right, now we have a, a win condition, then we'll use these cling to dust to make sure we don't die, and we should be all good. Okay, they they killed a spirit by exile by getting rid of their lava dart, which is fine. Saves us another damage. Oh, they stomped a... Okay, so the Bone Crusher Giant's a good card. Uh, we don't have a super reliable way to turn on our Fatal Pushes here, so that's worth noting. Oh, but Smallpox is a good way to do that. All right. Um, so, yeah, we're going to lose a Spirit by doing this, but I think that's fine. I guess we should do it after combat, right? Yeah. We could just discard one of the fatal pushes. So we'll discard fatal push, sacrifice of spirit, sacrifice of flagstones. And then yes, we'll go get our godless shrine. Yeah, that's fine. We just fatal push that. And then we can just cling, I guess, a mountain out of the opponent's side here just to get ahead on cards. So we can activate, we can cast Cling to Dust twice with uh, the mana that we have currently. So I guess we'll just go ahead and eat a Lightning Bolt. Or with the, uh, the cards in the graveyard we have currently, not with the mana we have currently. Alright, another Kai's Guile is great. Ooh, Seasoned Pyromancer. All right, that's actually a really good card. Um, Sure. Yeah, that resolves. That's scary. Okay. It's a good way for our opponent to get back into the game here. Oh, and just hard cast light up the stage. Wow. All right. Firebolt and light up the stage. Jeez. Okay. Wow, that's nuts. All 
All right, so we can cling another card. All right, we drew another cling. All right, so God the Shrine can let us kill the season pyromancer so we can we can fully escalate the kaya's guile hmm. or we can thought seize the opponent and then blood chief's thirst the season pyromancer and hold up kaya's guile for later and then like cling to dust it I guess it depends what that last card in the opponent's hand is. All right, let's 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 do that, because I think the last card in the opponent's hand might be another Seasoned Pyromancer. That's why I'm doing this. No, it's another Light of the Stage. Okay, so I, I guess that makes this hand, or makes this play a pretty reasonable then. So we're, we're going to shock in here. Unfortunately, we're going to cast this with Kicker. To kill the young pyromancer and then we're going to cling to dust it out of the graveyard so that the opponent can't exile it and we'll gain some life off of that all right so now we still have the kaya's guile which is kind of the the big deal um hopefully after the opponent casts this firebolt so that way we can exile it from the graveyard which will save us a little bit of life again Sure. Okay, so we got fire bolted. Now they're going to light up the stage. Oh, they just have a main deck Blood Moon. Wow. All right, it's a good thing we got our one planes. Jeez. Okay. Put that in the graveyard so that we can uh, turn on the cling to dusts. Wow. All right. So they did have main deck blood moon. So that's that's uh, we're lucky we drew our one planes. So we can still cast this Kaya's Guile here. And I think we're just going to eat the, um, the Firebolt out of our opponent's graveyard here. We'll do it, I guess, during, during our opponent's upkeep. We're going to cling the Firebolt out of our opponent's yard. All right, Kaya's good draw too. Kaya's a good win condition. All right, so Swift Spear. So now the the Kaya's guy is fully fully on. Ooh, they had another Firebolt. Wow. All right, and they can flash it back too. Jeez. Okay. No, they're just not going to though. Okay, that works for us too. So then we'll just fully escalate it to get rid of the Firebolt. In addition, oh no, they're going to do it post combat. Oh, to kill the other spirit. Sure. All right, we'll just entwine this main phase. That'll get rid of their whole graveyard and the Monastery Swift Spear, and we'll gain life. Cool. Now we can resolve the Kaya. I didn't want to downtick the Kaya um, because that seemed like a good way for the opponent to try to interact with it, is to downtick it, and then we leave it open to a bolt. I 
And I guess we'll get in there. If our opponent draws a Monastery Swift Spear, good for them. Oh, Lava Dart it. Okay, sure. They can Lava Dart the Kaya. All right, we'll just do this again because we want to... want to create the ability to cast Cling. Oh, they did damage to me. Wow. Okay. That means they're just dead next turn, isn't it? Let's see what they got. Oh, all right. I see. Okay. So maybe I didn't sequence that super well. I probably should have inquisitioned first. I guess either way, we still would have gotten two lava darts flash back at our face. All right, this time I won't make that same mistake. Classic turn 17, still playing. All right, opponent's got one turn to top deck. All right, and we'll just ultimate targeting the opponent. They have 24 cards in exile, so that just kills them. Cool. All right, so post-board. Kai's Guile seems good. Celestial Purge seems really good. And I think all the Gideons seem good. I think I'm going to cut the Thought Seizes post board. It's just a little too much damage. Um, yeah, the, the, these are the big ones. Those are the big ones that I'm, I'm really not a fan of. Um, the game's going super long, and the opponent has ways to utilize their mana. So, like, I'm not as big a fan of Smallpox in this matchup as some of the others. Um, just because, like, we don't want to do it early because we'll just lose. And they're hyper-efficient, so maybe we can cut a couple of Smallpoxes, just leave, like, two in. Um, yeah, it seems good. Nether Spirit actually seems like it would be really good if we can get that going. Uh, and how long the game went? We can even just cut a couple of, like, Inquisitions. Just, we're just going to play to the board. Um, because, like, we were top decking Inquisitions there because of how late the game was going and they weren't doing anything. So, I think I'm just going to go like this. I like this. We have removal for all of their creatures and we have life gain. And we just want to draw that half of our deck. We don't aren't really super interested in the other half. All right, I'm definitely going to keep this. Um, yeah, we could use a third land, but we're on the draw, so seems fine to me. We'll lose to like a super early blood moon, but I think that's okay. Good swamp, good draw. I'll play the Silent Clearing for sure turn two, so in case the opponent's just slamming Blood Moons, um, we can purge it. Forgotten Cave, wow, all right. And I think we unfortunately are just going to have to keep up the Celestial Purge for like the whole game. Well, never mind now. Now we won't need to do that. Uh, we could do it just to make sure we don't lose to, like, second Blood Moon. All right, let's do it. Let's make sure we don't lose to second Blood Moon. Bone Crusher Giant, Firebolt, Firebolt. All right, well, let's get rid of Seasoned Pyromancer. Ugh, 
They drew a blood moon. Jeez. All right. Well, now we could certainly lose. I guess we got to bring in, we got to bring in the um, anguished on makings just because of Blood Moon. That's crazy. I guess if we draw our planes, we're in okay shape, but wow. All right, well, we can kill that at least. Oh, no, we can't kill that. We need two swamps for Blood Chief's Thirst. All right, well, we can kill it now. All right, we'll do three modes because a lot of our cards don't matter. And we know they have some cards that do matter. So we'll get rid of a we'll get rid of a Kai's Guile, sure. Oh, and a Fatal Push. All right, so we're looking for our one basic planes. Man, that was a good top deck from the opponent. I think if we would have actually had Kaya down, we would be in better shape. But, you know, we didn't. So, oh well. What's unfortunate is that I, like, there's some positions where you're just locked out by Blood Moon where you feel like you can concede. But this is unfortunately not one of them because, like, if we draw this planes at any point, we probably win the game relatively easily. We still have like probably three or four more turns where if we draw this basic planes, we just win. So I'm not going to just concede because we can Kaya's Guile to make them sacrifice this and get rid of their Firebolt and Season Pyromancer. All right. I'm going to hold this Marsh Flats as a, um, as a discard for Smallpox or something. We don't need a seventh land. All right, Season Pyromancer, I think, is enough to call it. Yeah, we'll just concede now. Sure. They're going to get four 1-1s, one -ones and then, you know, we can't. There's not, the, there's not that much we can do after that. Um, Do we want Bantu's Last Reckoning? Probably not. Like, we have these Planeswalkers. They're probably fine. And we do have our, a lot of removal still, so let's just do that. All right, we, we would like to play first. We're not an 8-rack deck. Yeah, we can keep this. It's not great, but we've got the Fatal Push, Celestial Purge, stuff. Yeah, all right. This is the other half of the deck. We haven't gotten to the uh, Liliana, the Veil, um, Lingering Souls part of the deck too often yet. All right, Castle Lockdwain enters tapped, so I'm going to play it here, so this way we can push the Monastery Swift Spear, and then next turn we have the Liliana open. We would lose to Blood Moon this way, but we wouldn't lose to Magus of the Moon. So I guess that's good if we just slam the Liliana. I don't think we can not slam the Liliana in fear like that. Like I think we, we just need to do it. I'm not going to let the opponent deal us damage because they could have uh, light up the stage. I'm going to do this before damage. Oh, Pyrite Spellbomb? Only a one lander? Oh no, they had a Forgotten Cave. Okay. Ooh. Alright, so now we can Inquisition the opponent, or we could just slam Liliana, and then it's Liliana versus Blood Moon. <sighs> wow. I think we need to check their hand. I don't think we can beat a Blood Moon. <laughs> I wish we could, but we really can't beat a Blood Moon here. Alright, they have a Blood Moon too.
All right, so now I guess we just got to make the way for Liliana's here. So unfortunately, this is going to turn on because this stupid silent clearing makes us take damage. This is going to turn on light off the stage, but we're going to hope the opponent doesn't notice that. We want to get rid of the, the board for Liliana, but we have taken damage now, so the opponent does have a turned on um, light up the stage, but they might not know because that's a weird interaction that not, doesn't come up all the time. No, they do. Okay. Oh, and they found double land. Wow. All right. So we know their hand is Lava Dart. Firebolt. All right, so let's just go. Liliana will pitch the Lingering Souls, and then the opponent's going to blow it, blow it up with double Pyrite Spell Bomb, and then we'll just play the other Liliana. That's our plan here. Opponent discards a lava dart, it's fine. Oh, Soul Scar Mage. Okay, and then they're gonna double pirate spell bomb probably. To blow this up. Okay. Oh no, just fire bolt it, pirate spell bomb it. Okay, sure. All right, this works out well. Go black, black. Play Liliana. And then we can honestly uptick the Liliana here. And then we can just chump block the Soul Scar Mage. Do that, because otherwise we could kill that and then make the opponent use the Pyrite Spell Bomb on this here, but this way, we might be able to even kill the um, Soul Scar Mage in combat with the back of these Lingering Souls, or make the opponent use the Pyrite Spell Bomb on the Lingering Souls token. Or on this, yeah. So I think I like this better. This Liliana is a lot closer to the ultimate now. We're gonna lose to a Blood Moon, but that's just how this deck is sometimes. Like we don't we don't get control over our draws. I am going to double block, make the opponent flash back this Lava Dart. Or do something here. Because then we have the Shambling Vent to block from this point on. And if they're flashing back the Fire Lava Dart, they're not able to cast the Fire Bolt from their graveyard very quickly. Ooh, Kaya's Guile. All right, so we can just um, make our opponent sacrifice this and exile their graveyard. And then just take this up. Now we probably... We probably want to draw a card at the end of the turn here, yeah. Draw a card. All right, another Kai's Guile, perfect. Oh, and a Gideon, oof. All right, so maybe we just kill the opponent's Soul Scar Mage and play Gideon. Yeah, let's just do that. We'll just down tick this, this is fine. And then we'll play Gideon. Nice. 
make a knight. Opponent does nothing, okay? I'll well, just keep making knights. And just hold up the rest of the cards here. Stomp it. Uh, sure. Sure. All right, we'll eat. We'll eat a fatal push to see exactly how we should do this. Okay, another Kai's Guile makes this easy. That's exactly what I was looking for. Is should we try to do it before? So we'll, each opponent sacrifices a creature, create a 1 1. So now, now we have obviously removal for both. So. That's fine. All right, so uh, create each. Well, I don't know why I have so much trouble looking at this card. Each one sacrifice a creature, create a 1 1. There we go. Cool. And then. We can get in for seven here or eight here. Yeah, let's get in for eight. That sounds good. Perfect. All right, it took forever, but we're one and oh. All right, everyone, welcome to round three. We've won the die roll. We're keeping this hand. This hand's really good. We got the Thought Seize Inquisition ling Lingering Souls. Are they Oops All Spells? No, they're Amulet Titan. Okay. I don't think the opponent can play something super scary here on that, that would cost more than three mana, so I think we're good with just Inquisition first and then... Oh, smallpox is good in this matchup. Jeez, is it good in this matchup? All right. Oh, they have Azusa also. Yikes. Oh uh, boy. Um. Well, like Azusa does less damage, so I guess we'll take the Dryad. Yeah, that's not great though. <laughs> that's not what I was looking to see. All right, so they play Azusa and the Castle Garenbrig. And that's the card they drew for the turn. All right, so we can Thought Seize the Turn Timber Symbiosis out of our opponent's hand here. And just hope the opponent's on full on bricks for like forever. We could also Liliana downtick and then smallpox the following turn, which might be worthwhile. All right, opponent just plays out their hand. That's fine. Kaya. Does Kaya do anything different? Not really. All right, so we'll just Liliana uptick. Get rid of the lingering souls, and then we can eventually try to smallpox. But we have to have the opponent brick, because the opponent yeah, the opponent can draw okay, amulet's not. Oh, we can actually get rid of amulet. Okay, so that's that's a little less scary too. Alright, so we can just Blood Chief's Thirst the Grazer.
and then down tick, sacrificing the Azusa. And then we can play Kaya here and exile the amulet so the opponent can't just kill us if they draw primeval titan and then we have an answer to it all right cool please no titan oh explore okay how do they draw it no, <laughs> they drew it into exactly having enough. Ah, oh, yikes. All right, so let's hope they don't have a colony garden in the deck. That's the, the hope now is no colony garden. I don't know if the deck is playing colony garden again. It wasn't for a while, but if they have a colony garden, we might lose. I hope they just have like double bounce land or just double regular land or something setting up for the following turn. Like they could get, um, well, if they play bounce land, whatever land they pick up, they're going to discard to the Liliana. So I guess that's good. We also, even if the opponent does have a colony garden, we could draw another smallpox off the top or we could draw. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Good. Nice. Good, good, good. All right. So we, Yeah, we play the other flagstones first. We sacrifice this flagstones. Okay. Yes. Yeah. A godless shrine tapped. Then we play other smallpox. Or we play just regular smallpox, sure. And we'll get our planes. No. Oh, opponent concedes the match. Wow. Really just didn't want to play against smallpox. All right. Sweet. We this is not a good matchup for us. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um I guess that just that was a really good smallpox. But like what are we doing post board in this matchup? We got what, like anguished on makings? <laughs> like, this is not a good matchup. All right, whatever. All right, uh, round three on the play. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is a turn two smallpox hand, so and we're gonna keep that. That's... Let's just hope the opponent plays something on one, but I think it's, it's probably worth just smallpoxing in general on two. Um, just the opponent's gonna be so far back. But this is the first time I've gotten a um, a smallpox hand on. Oh yeah, if they're Tron, yeah. All right, let's just let's smallpox. A smallpox and Thoughtseize. Look at that. All right, smallpox. So we'll discard a Marsh Flats. Tron's not a very good matchup either. We're getting all the big mana decks. This is this meant this deck is meant to beat creature decks, you know. Um, we just gotta hope they can't assemble Tron and that we can Liliana them into the ground. Okay, power plant, sure. Oh, another smallpox. All right, so we can just Liliana here to get this going, and then next turn we can smallpox again. Nice. All right. And we'll get rid of a land, because we can thought seize into smallpox, sure. So our best draw off the top is a land. No. Well, Liliana is not horrible either. All right. So we will we'll have our opponent discard first because we don't want our opponent to know that they're going to lose a land here. 
So they might discard a little bit differently off the Liliana because now they, they're losing two more cards out of their hand that they didn't know about previously. Golos, wow. Do they have Tron in hand too? Uh, yeah, they had Urza's Mine in hand. Oh my gosh. All right. All right, let's see what card they get here. All right, they get another Mine. Then they're going to sacrifice the Mine. Oh, they get the power plant. They're going to sacrifice the power plant. Okay. We'll get rid of Herborg. Because we don't want our opponent, if they have Golos, we don't want our opponent to get an advantage off of that. Kai's guy is not very good in this matchup anyway, so that's fine. They'll get rid of their Cascading Cataract. Oh, they got rid of their Cascading Cataract the last turn. All right, they get rid of Karn. So they're just going to set up Tron. So we got to beat Tron. No payoff. All right, cool. All right, so I'm not going to split our opponent's cards yet. I'll split it next turn if uh, we're not dead. So we just need the opponent to draw something that's... that's Like, if they draw a land, that's perfect, because then we can split split their pot their lands with the Liliana, but I didn't wanna maybe I should have let them not top deck. Alright, it didn't work good. So we'll play this and then we will split our opponent's lands so that we don't just randomly die to Alright, and we have destroyed a power plant and a mine so far. So I guess we'll just put Yeah, I guess we'll just split like this. Seems best. The opponent can keep two lands. take a look at our opponent's hand see if they have a yeah they do all right so that was, that was perfect see if they were drawing some of their green spells and they were cool getting rid of payoffs too found a green source which is a little scary. So now they have Sylvan Scrying is a live draw, Ancient Stirrings is a live draw. Expedition map is a live draw. Yikes. All right, so now we can start eating some of our opponent's cards though. Try to find a little bit more action here. Okaya. All right. That'll that'll kill the opponent pretty quick play that tick up get rid of Golos and a mine sure all right so the opponent is dead in two turns so they they've got to draw they have like two draw steps at action Do they draw it? No. Okay. All right, cool. And the opponent's dead next turn. There's a lot of cards actually the opponent could draw here that would, okay, cool. And they, they lost, perfect. 
Oof. All right, I don't know how we're even remotely going to win this match, but I mean, we can try. So we can bring in the Gideons and Stony Silence and the Aguish Stud Makings. And we can take out the Fatal Pushes and the Collective Brutalities and the Kaya's Giles are not very good either. So maybe we'll leave one Kaya's Guile in and just cut these. All right, let's do that. We need some really good small pox hands. We need small box into pressure. The Gideons are our only way to provide pressure, and uh, that's a little dubious. Opponent mulligans to six. This hand's got the small pox. Got thoughts using small pox. It's on the draw. Hapland. I'm going to keep it because Nether Spirit's also a pretty good clock. And we got the smallpox, which is like our only way of really interacting with the opponent. And we can do it on two, assuming we draw land in our top two. So that it'll keep the opponent off a of Tron. And then we can put Nether Spirit in our yard. Love Nether Spirit. Nether Spirit's like, it might be actually my favorite creature. All right. All right, we really need to draw that land. It can't be a flagstones. It's got to be a black land. No. All right, well, we can thought seize our opponent off of whatever they're going to play and hope to reevaluate this. All right, so we can get rid of the Karn and just leave the opponent with nothing to do. Sure, opponents just cycling through their stars. Okay, nothing. Lingering souls, yikes. All right, well, we know that they, uh, we know they have, um, hmm. All right, we know they have a discard, uh, a way to prevent themselves from getting hit by discard. So I'm going to Inquisition myself. So they're going to cast it anyway, but at least this way we get to put the Nether Spirit into the graveyard. And then all of our future Thought Seizes are still turned on. So not like the best play in the world, but it worked. And we can easily concede to Karn. Uh, we missed two land drops. That was enough. We we're on the draw. It was kind of a risky hand anyway, but I think we really needed, you know, specific things to go right in order to win anyway. And, uh, yeah. All right. Let's play first. Okay. This is a really weird hand. But I think we're good. We're gonna have to go Castle Locked Wayne, Castle Locked Wayne, Flagstones, Smallpox in order to Smallpox again. So we're gonna have to go Tapland, Tapland, Flagstones, Smallpox, and then do it again. Okay. Put it Mulligan to six. Best draw would be you know like a Thought Seize probably. Playing the dust. That's not very good. So we'll just play another Castle. Pass. So now we have black, black. So the opponent can, if they play a, or something here, we can smallpox. I will cycle this cling to dust if the opponent plays something here that they try to cycle through. Like I'd like them to cycle through here. Cycle through to green. Yeah, okay. 
Oh, another flagstones. All right. We'll float and we'll smallpox. We could discard, I guess, a cling to dust. Cool, and then next turn we can do it again. Depending on what they play, of course. Okay, they have a mine this time. So I guess we are gonna do it again then. Sure. So we'll play flagstones. Oh, I clicked the wrong card. Yikes. I was like, oh, three mana. Mm, that sucks. Well, did not mean to do that. So now we might just get Trond. Please no Tron. Or if they do have Tron. Okay, so it's not going to be a scary Tron. Okay, maybe this worked out well. So I did not mean to do this or did not want to do this. This is not my intention, but it actually worked out super well <laughs> that we, we played it in that order. So that's funny. Because now they only have two mana. Oh, expedition maps. All right. So they are going to get to reassemble Tron again. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, my gosh. No, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> Stony Silence plus Swamp. Smallpox. <laughs> that Stony Silence is probably the perfect draw there. Kaya, I think, would have been a slightly better because I could have exiled it and then um, also had a win condition. But this is pretty good. The opponent's also going to... What's... Oh. Yes. I like to do that. And then tick up. Ooh, get rid of Oblivion Stone. Nice. See if they have Tron. No. All right. Kaya's Guile. Um, yeah, we'll just tick up and... Yeah, we'll tick up and then we'll just draw a card off of Castle Loctwain. I guess we could do it now. In case we draw a Thoughtseize. We draw Inquisition. Sure, we'll cast that. No, they have a Karn. Okay. Get rid of that Karn. And then we'll pass the turn. Next turn we can split our opponent's cards with the Liliana. Especially if they play a land here. Oblivion Stone, sure. All right, so we will draw. Oh, Smallpox, yes. All right, looks like we're gonna be Tron. Maybe this is a better matchup than I thought. I don't know. Still think we got a little lucky, but whatever. All right, so we'll, uh, I guess we can cast both. We should probably do that. I don't know. Well, then we'll lose a Lingering Soul token. Nah, all right, we'll just Smallpox then. Because if we cast Lingering Souls first, we have to sacrifice a Lingering Soul, so it's not, not even a very great use of our our mana. Maybe it was slightly better. Cool. And then we'll 
just go ahead and split our opponent's lands to make it even harder for them to assemble Tron. So we'll do Oblivion Stone and this versus. Shambling vent. Cool. All right. So now we just need to, you know, finish this off. Um, the shambling vent will help actually a bit with that. Play that. Take this up. All right. Thought Seize doesn't do anything here. All right. Getting closer to Tron. I think this is fine taking a little bit of time off to to just try to kill the opponent here. All right, opponent doesn't have anything. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, we're uh what 3 and 0 now with this uh pox list. Awesome. Let's uh let's try to get the 5-0. All right, everyone, welcome to round 4. This hand is very awkward, but we're going to keep it. It's got lands and spells, and these spells can beat most most decks, especially if it's Jund. Like we're getting thought seized here. Very happy to keep this hand. Yep, sounds good. I'm certainly not going to mulligan into a thought seized deck. So Jund basically does what we're doing a little bit better. It squeezes resources. Um, the positive thing is that they have a lot of cards that don't match up well against ours, but the overall strategy that they're doing is like ours, but a little better. That makes sense. So like if they play a Ren and Six here, then they're gaining land. So the smallpox doesn't really do anything. But like we're drawing gasoline off the top with Liliana. Oh, they took smallpox. Wow. So maybe they're not, they don't have Ren and Six in their deck. That would be my guess, based on that take. Hex Drinker. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to Thought Seize them, because the Hex Drinker, oh, I guess they, if they predict, uh, well, then we can just, yeah, if they spend the whole turn plussing it, then we can Lily on it eventually. So, yeah, let's do this. All right. And, I mean, the Fatal Push doesn't matter. Yeah, let's get rid of scavenging goose. That's fine. We have answers for Bob. So they are just black green rock. So they're literally just our deck, but a little bit different. Weird. Okay. They're taking a lot of damage off their own lands too, which unfortunately isn't going to matter much. All right, so we need to draw. We have a little bit of time, but we need to draw a land here. Black land. We need to draw black land. If we draw another flagstones, it doesn't work. Oh boy. All right, we got one more turn to draw that. Unless they draw a creature. If they draw a creature, nope, they didn't draw a creature. All right. Well, now, now I think we're in a lot of trouble here. What can we draw? Well, it's only a seven, so we need to draw like land smallpox. Right, they've... So they can go to six. Yeah, we're just dead. We, we can't beat a hex drinker here. Wow, that's crazy. All right, so we just didn't draw lands and then we lost because of it. Crazy. All right. Because Kaya could have killed it before and everything. All right, so they're they're playing a lot of creatures. So we're going to bring in all of these. We're bringing in, like, all of our big stuff. Like, literally all of it. We even might even bring in the Celestial Purges. 
All right, so we need these for sure. We don't need collective brutality. Don't care about that at all. Um, don't care about any of our discard because the opponent's also gonna have discard. So let's let's maybe do this. So yeah, we have no discard in the deck now because it's gonna be a top deck war. Like that, we were we don't care how many discard spells they had. We really needed to draw lands. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this. We can see how many black cards they play. Like, they play Dark Confidant, which almost is enough in itself just to play Celestial Purge, so we have a, a good answer to it. We also have Liliana. Yeah, maybe we should. All right, let's see if we can make a couple of cuts real quick. We'll cut, like, oh, well, no, too late. Yeah, this hand's very good. This one actually has lands to cast our spells, too. It's got ways to answer Planeswalkers. I'm surprised they have discard in. Really surprised they have discard in. Yeah, that's so weird. All right. Yeah, I don't, like, what is this discard accomplishing? I mean, I guess they could take the Kaya here. So it is accomplishing something, but it just doesn't doesn't seem right. Like, we've got these Castle Locked Wains that we're going to try to pull ahead with and stuff. Like, our lands are better than theirs. Yeah, I'm playing the Kaya, like... It kills their uh, their hex drinkers, at least. Okay, yeah, that we're we're smallpoxing now. So we'll smallpox, um, and we will discard a plains and sacrifice the swamp. And they'll probably get rid of the ghost quarter. And then we'll get rid of Dark Confidant and Ghost Quarter. Another Dark Confidant, okay. Someone's putting up a fight. Uh, Liliana's great. All right, they have six cards in exile, so we need to get them up to 19 cards to win the game. Is this Questing Beast? Oh, okay. Are they going to kill a Kaya? No. Oh, wow. Okay. Ooh. All right. Let's just get rid of the, the Vraska, I guess. See if they have a creature here. They do. All right, so Smallpox is going to come in real clutch again. Oh, man. And Nether Spirit. Oh, I love Nether Spirit. Oh, my gosh. This is great. Why are they doing that? What? Now they have to discard that card. What? Okay. I I think I'm going to get rid of the Shambling Vent because the Locked Wayne represents more damage in the late game. Or represents more usability in the late game. Alright, so now we have the Nether Spirit. They have nine cards exiled. So we're getting closer. Oh, they have Abrupt Decay. Okay. Alright, so we're, we're pretty much at parity. I just have a better creature than they do. All right, now we need lands. 
Okay, they have lands. This is scary. Now, okay, there we go. I was going to say, both of us need, are trying to draw lands in action, and um, our opponent has enough lands where all they need now is action, and we don't. We need action still. Nether Spirit is such a good card. Oh my gosh. Silent Clearing. I think I'd rather draw cards than attack the opponent for two. So I'm going to draw a card off the left wing. The opponent has probably just hand disruption. We'll draw Herborg. Okay, that's nice. All right, so we'll attack the opponent first, and then we'll smallpox. Not really a reason to not smallpox, because we get back the nether spirit, so do it. Um, yeah, we don't want, our opponent has black lands too, so we don't want to, don't want to get them in that situation either. All right. Drew a land. If they drew a spell, Corrupt Decay is their best draw. Tireless Tracker is not that good. Okay, we get back our Nether Spirit. Flagstones. So we can... Yeah, I guess we should just minus two. I was going to say we could minus six and do like Tireless Tracker versus the four lands, but that's this, literally the same thing. So that's not a good play. And we'll draw cards instead of attacking again. Yeah, this locked wing has just been so good. Nice. And we will just discard the Urborg here. Keep getting in with this Nether Spirit, which is going to deal 20 damage. I love Nether Spirit. Heart's so good. Grim Flare, we can push that and draw a card. But it's going to pack it in anytime now. We can begin attacking at some point here. Sure. Um, yeah, let's draw Kaya, okay. Just entwine this. Theoretically could have um, ultimated the Liliana there, but I mean, what would we, what would we really do with it? The Liliana? Okay. And we'll just kill the Nether Spirit because it comes back. <laughs> nice. All right. It's a good, good against Liliana. Just kill <laughs> Nether Spirit is so good. All right, um, yeah, Celestial Purge is definitely coming in. Opponent's got a lot of cards we can kill with it. So now now I would say, seriously, like our whole deck is very good against what the opponent's trying to do. Um, we could probably get away with getting rid of these Bantus. Uh, I didn't see as many creatures out of the opponent as I thought. Like, they have a lot of bobs and stuff, but I think with us bringing in extra removal, we should be fine. Plus, we got, like, Gideons that can tie down Tarmogoyfs. Yeah, I think we're good with that. I think I'd rather just have more spot removal. Is that true? Maybe Kaya's not great. Maybe we'll bring in a Bantu over a Kaya. So that way we have like a sweeper in the deck. On the draw, smallpox is worse. We could consider cutting a smallpox on the draw. Okay. Too late now. If the opponent's keeping in discard, I'm keeping this hand. Like, 
I don't know why they have discard still in, but they've they've kept a lot of discard in. And you saw like in that top deck war there, like they're mulliganing and they have bad cards in their deck still. Maybe they took it out this time because they realized that was just a horrible sideboarding plan. All right, and we we're gonna be great if we draw lands. I mean, that's that's how it's been the last couple of games, though. If we draw lands, we we win. And uh, we did draw lands the second game. Did not draw them the first game. So maybe this deck should have like twenty five lands in it. All right, I'm going to play Urborg and just pass because we want... So they're going to play Liliana. We're going to discard Lingering Souls and Celestial Purge the Liliana. And then we're going to untap and Gideon. Here comes a Liliana. We're going to purge the Liliana. Oh, no, they duress us. Uh, okay. Got us, buddy. Duress. I mean, I guess that does get everything. Like, okay. Got it. Lingering Souls is really good against Lily. Lingering Souls is good against our whole deck. The fact that we played two games without resolving a Lingering Souls is kind of nuts. Especially with how long they were. I don't really know how the opponent wins from here. I mean, we're just going to push that. Oh yeah, now we're now we're yeah. just start squeezing the opponent. Opponent has veil of summer. We didn't even have any um any discard, so I mean the remove it's good against removal though. Alright, duress us, sure. It's fine. We have all these lingering souls in these yard. Unless they play like Nile spell bomb here, we're probably in very good shape. Scavenging ooze, that's fine. Uh, yeah, we'll just just make them sacrifice the ooze, and um, we'll play. We could play our lingering souls from hand. That doesn't play well around another scavenging ooze, but I think that's fine. We'll just do that. Then next turn we can flash them both back. Tyler's Tracker is their best card. Assassin's Trophy, sure. We got our one planes. So, basically, the question here is whether or not we want to play around whether we want to play around um what's that card called um it's a weird one uh maelstrom pulse and i think the answer is yes so i'm playing around maelstrom pulse this way we're going to leave one lingering souls in the yard at a certain point they just have to cast it okay Oh, Plague Engineer. Okay, that's another card. That's another reason to play around. So they get they get all the spirits here. Wow. Okay. Okay, okay, opponent. Gonna purge that. Get the Lingering Souls going here. We I'm holding up this Marsh Flats because that way we have a... Um, it still taps for mana because of the Urborg, and this way we still have a Fatal Push Enabler. Oh, Castle Locked Wing. Yes, there we go. That was, like, probably the best draw on the whole deck. Now oh, I need to draw black and black. I said black, black. Oh, Gideon. Yeah. Get in here, Gideon. 
Prevent damage. Go spirits. Treetop village. I like treetop village. It's a good card. Nether spirit. Yeah. Flagstones. Just play a flagstones. It's fine. Should have one godless shrine left. No. And then we'll just play this. Take up on the Tarmogoyf again. Attack with just a spirit, so this way we can double block with the treetop spirit and um, the nether spirit. Both spirits. Good draw from the opponent. Very good draw. Sure. And then this is Nether Spirit's time to shine here. Let's get in here with the double block. And then we'll get the Nether Spirit back. Next turn, we can fire in with the Shambling Vent and the Nether Spirit, um, just because of how... Ooh, Scavenging news. All right, that's a little scary. Yeah, we've really flooded out here. All right, so maybe, maybe we can sacrifice this Marsh Flats here, just to thin a little bit. We don't have that many bad cards in the deck anymore, either. Wow, another Flagstones, jeez. All right, prevent damage from the scavenging ooze again, the uh, or from the tarmogoyf. The uh, scavenging ooze can start to eat our, um, can eat like the nether spirit out of the graveyard, which is a little scary. So we need to hold it up as a blocker now. It's gonna be a very big scavenging ooze. Well, not that big. They only have one other creature in the yard, so they can make it a four four. They still don't have good attacks. But they, they ate our smallpox. Okay, that doesn't matter. Another treetop village. Wow, the opponent's got a really grindy build. That's so many tap lands that they're playing. So many. They still don't have good attacks. I mean, I'd love them to attack, but they don't have good attacks. All right, Fatal Push is a good draw. All right, so let's push the Scavenging Ooze. They can eat a couple of things, that's fine. I'm going to play a Flagstones because uh, I want to turn on as many activations or any, as many... Oh, no, they just didn't even do anything with it, okay? Do that, that's fine. There's no reason to not shuffle. Yes. Okay. All right, and we'll attack for one. Uh, we'll have the Nether Spirit and the Shambling Vent block the um, the Treetop Village if it attacks. Oh, actually. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to have the Gideon take three damage. That's fine. The, Gide the Gideon's loyalty doesn't actually matter too much. So I'm cool with this. See what their follow-up is. With Dark Confidant. Okay. That, on the other hand, is a little bit more scary. Oh, Lingering Souls. All right, cool. 
All right, so we'll do it on the Tarmogoyf again. One, two, three. Play that. We'll play this. Keep the new one. Shuffle for good luck. Black, black. Play Lingering Souls. And then we will... Fire in with the Shambling Vent. Fire in with all of these. So the opponent can block one on the Tarmogoyf. The Tarmogoyf can block that, but it, it deals all damage. That would be... Yeah. Okay, and Hex Drinker. Cool. So now the opponent is on a clock from their own Dark Confidant also. So they can play, dark, you know, they can play their card here, but like... So they, they lose to any spell off the top. If we just attack with all our spirits. They'd have to they have to draw like exactly Plague Engineer here to get back into the game. What do they got? Oh, Tireless Tracker. Sure. Okay. So I think we're... Oh, they're leveling up the Hex Drinker. Sure. Okay. So like I said, the opponent's going to need to brick off the top and also have us... They're going to need to brick off the top and also do a lot of damage. So I'm not blocking the Dark Confidant. That's fine. Oh, Anguished Unmaking. Okay, so we can... Oh, I think we can just win here, right? So we make this a creature, we kill one blocker, and then we attack. Yeah. All right, so we make this a 4-4. Four, four. We exile the Tarmogoyf. And then we activate the Shambling Vent, and we just attack. Cool, go into the finals. This is very exciting. Black White Pox. I'm going to kick Magic Online and we'll be right back. All right, everyone, welcome to the finals. We are on the play. I think we haven't been on the play very often. So maybe being on the play bodes well for this final matchup. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe that means we're going to get smoked now. Because I'm pretty sure we rolled the draw like four out of these five rounds. Or three out of them. Yeah, we might have only won two die rolls this time. Yeah, I'm keeping this hand. Yeah, let's do it. Opponent's on Allurus deck, um, which means it's probably going to be grindy, uh, which I think is a good sign. We'll see. Go Swamp into Thoughtseize, the best line in the game of Magic. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, another black-green deck. Uh, just mid-range, like, two colors. There's... The Fatal Pushes aren't doing anything. This, this is great. They're going to start Fatal Pushing Lingering Souls tokens at some point. Um, I'm just going to play Locked Wayne. And then we can start going in with uh, Liliana. Get rid of the Swamp, I guess. Opponent can spend their whole turn attacking the Liliana here for three, which, I mean, isn't a horrible use of their their turn. All right, so Blooming Marsh, Blooming Marsh, and Treetop Village and Fatal Push are done. Okay. Uh, let's cling the opponent's thought seas to dust. All right, we drew an Urborg. So we'll just play Lingering Souls then. And we'll discard an Urborg. 
the opponent can kill the, the Liliana here um, if they want to, uh, like, pretty much spend their whole turn again with um, the Treetop Village, but we got all these Lingering Souls, which are going to be really hard for the opponent to beat. Sure. We can even double... Oh, uh, they have a Fatal Push, so, yeah, we shouldn't do that. I was going to say we could double Chump, um, but the Fatal Push would push through the damage, so not going to do that. All right, another Flagstones is great. We'll go Lingering Souls. Flagstones, keep this one. And they shouldn't have um, Plague Engineer main deck. I mean, if they do, they got us, but I'm not playing around Plague Engineer main deck. They could have Maelstrom Pulse main deck, but that would just be a really good draw, especially if they're Fatal Pushing. So it already is pretty good value for us. They're going to have to get rid of this castle locked wing at some point. Yeah, there we go. Just get the planes, I guess. And they put Lurus in hand, okay. I uh, tapped in a way that's kind of awkward, but it works. All right, we're we're on the beat down with these spirits now. Oh, bobble. Okay, so that bobble and Luris is a good good combo. They got a lot of ground to make up though. Especially since we can cling to dust it at some point. Sure. Luris gets in there. Oh, and Ghost Quarter, okay. Get in there with the Treetop Village, sure. Not gonna block. Oh, Smallpox, yes. All right, so we'll um, attack first. And then we will smallpox. Sacrificing a spirit. Sacrificing a flagstones. But it sacrifices a swamp. No, don't want that. And then we will exile Flurus and a Field of Ruin. And pass the turn. Opponent's dead on board. So they're going to have to kill multiple spirits over the course of the next couple of turns or gain a lot of life. And deal with the Kaya. All right, Nihil Spell Bomb is actually a good way of starting this. They get rid of our, our Cling to Dust, which is our... Um, that's our card advantage engine. Yeah, I think that that's... Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Cool. So the Lingering Souls got there for sure. All right, we'll see if this opponent boards a little bit better than our last one. Our, but we're going to bring in everything except for the Stony Silences out of the sideboard, I believe. That's what we did the last time. Or maybe maybe we won't bring in the Bantu on the draw. Uh, maybe that's wrong. All right, so anyway, these seven are coming out for sure. Um, and then the Brutalities came out the last time. And then it was, what do we want to do after that was our kind of our question. So I think what we did is we trimmed one... Um, Kaya to bring in one Bantu. And I think we'll do that again. 
So we got a lot of these cards here for fair matchups. Uh, a lot of them deal, you know, deal with multiple different things. Um, but I think I like them the best. Pardon for that alarm there. Cool. All right, so we are up a game in the finals. Let's see if we can do it here. I apologize for how long this video is. This is an incredibly long video. All right, I'm gonna keep this hand. Um, all of our hands, we've always just been like, oh, if we draw lands, we win this game, no problem. And I'm not gonna mulligan against Thoughtseize decks. They might not be playing Thoughtseize post board, but we'll see. And like Mishra's Bauble is a great thing to hit with the cling to dust. Like if they Thoughtseize here, what are they doing? No, okay, they just, oh, they're they're playing Shadow too. Interesting, okay, so that's that's good to know. Them shocking it in means that they're playing Shadow, which I guess makes sense, um, but it didn't really register the first time. I think we'll just play a Swamp because I really want to eat that Bobble, and yeah, I really want to eat that Bobble, and um, we'll, we'll have time to play the Shambling event tapped, I believe, or we should at least. All right, so let's eat, let's eat that. Ooh, more lands, that's not good. All right. <sighs> wow. All right, well, we're set up well for small poxes and Lilianas if we can get them down, <laughs> if we can draw them. We have both silent clearings, though, so that's not super scary, but sure. The opponent probably has, um... oh, that's actually a great draw. Let's do that. Let's just play this Marsh Flats, and then we'll sacrifice the Marsh Flats to the Smallpox. But this plays around uh, Veil of Summer, which is what I was a little worried about. Um, and we just have a very good good opportunity to use it right now. So we'll get rid of this Marsh Flats, because we don't have that many lands in the deck, honestly, that we can search up. Dark Boar Pathway. Nice. All right, so they definitely have Veil of Summer. Is there a way we can play around it? Not really. Are we supposed to just roll into the skid here? Ugh, I hate it. I think we have to. We were able to get through it last time, but yeah, I mean, they have Veil of Summer here, and that's, yeah, that's kind of... Kind of problematic. Oh, and they have Inquisition too? Yikes. All right. All right. Oh, Anguish Unmaking. Okay. Well, I think we got a little lucky. So now we don't just lose. We're not in good shape, but we don't just lose. I think we would have just lost otherwise. It's just so many cards. <sighs> Nimble Mongoose. Wow. All right. Well, we're definitely going to bring in the other Bantu. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, let's just play the Lingering Souls. EE on zero is a good draw, too. Okay. Wow, opponents really got it all. I'm taking five here. We still have Bantus. Nile Spellbomb, oh my gosh. All right, wow. Yeah, opponent's doing what we're doing, but just better. I think our best bet game, the next game, is going to be to um, to draw our Gideons and Bantu section of the deck. We definitely have to bring in the other Bantu. 
So yeah, Veil of Summer, they do have some removal in. Looks like they must have Death Shadow. Or otherwise, why are they shocking? Oh, they probably just had Veil of Summer up. They were just holding up Veil of Summer the whole time. So they, they're not playing Shadow. All right, they're not playing Shadow. That's good to know. Or good to, to think about. Fatal Push. All right, well, we can kill... We can kill the one card with Fatal Push. Ooh, Smallpox. <gasps> wow. Oh, that was perfect. We can do this, and then we can Smallpox. Wow, that's cool. Uh, I think we want to just get rid of the Urborg. It's fine. It helps out the opponent, too. And they discarded a Maelstrom Pulse. Oh, my gosh. That was wonderful. It was like the best series of draws we could have possibly had. Cool. Now the opponent's top decking. They're going to blow up our Silent Clearing, which is fine. All right, it's a playable magic card. All right, so we have an interesting decision here. We can let the opponent cast a card and then we can make our opponent sacrifice the Lurus and make a 1-1, one -one, or we can just make a 1-1 one -one right now and get rid of our opponent's graveyard so they can't get anything back. I think as weird as that is, I think that's actually the right play. I'm going to... Exile their graveyard and gain four life. This could be wrong. I could have waited until they cast a like scavenging ooze or something and then made them sacrifice the Lurus. Oh, and if they had Bobble in hand, I didn't know they had Bobble in hand. So that's, <sighs> I guess that was the downside to all this, to this, this whole line. Wow. Yeah, the opponent's just going to have so many cards in hand now. Holy crap. Hopefully they just have way too much hand disruption. <laughs> Knight's Whisper? Oh my gosh. All right, so the opponent, this opponent is way grindier than our last opponent. Like, Knight's Whisper? Come on now. We got all these treetop villages and stuff. They know what card we're drawing. It must not be very good. Oh, it's a cling to dust. It actually is kind of good. Um, let's eat their Knight's Whisper. Play this tapped. Okay. All right, so now we can eat this. All right, and we're still dead because the opponent just does the treetop village thing. Okay. All right, game three. So we're definitely bringing in Bantu. <laughs> And I'm not sure what we're going to board out. The Celestial Purges didn't seem great. Like, a lot of the cards they were playing that we were having trouble beating were green. They do have Dark Confidant, though. Nah. All right. Well, the Celestial Purge is a little less encompassing than the Bantus. The Bantus, I think, is is very solid. Opponent having Veil of Summer is really rough. They just are playing off curve, which is probably the right way to play. Um, yeah, this has Urborg Flagstone, so let's keep this.
We'll just play flagstones first, that's fine. There is a question here if they just play a land tapped, if we're supposed to just er smallpox next turn. There's a chance we're not supposed to. Maybe they'll play a Hex Drinker. That would actually be ideal. Okay, they're not doing anything. Oh, I think I think because we drew Nether Spirit, we have to do it because we can just put the Nether Spirit in the graveyard. Yeah, let's do it. Just putting them back a land. We get to discard the Nether Spirit. I, 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 I we can't not do this. Like this is a great opportunity to just do this. Sure, that doesn't do anything. We'll discard the Nether Spirit. And then next turn we can just play Lingering Souls. All right, so the opponent, we just stone rain them. Oh, Field of Rune is all they have? Nice, let's do it. All right, we got, we got our beat downs now. Oh, that's all they got, nice. Cool. All right, let's get in there. We got we got our beatdowns. We just have to, you know, if the opponent doesn't draw lands, we're going to be in good shape. Doesn't look like they drew a land again. Sure. Another Lingering Souls. Nice. Does that cut the clock enough? So we can attack for, we're attacking for six this turn. It does not cut the clock enough. So I guess we'll just draw a card then. Yeah, we'll just draw a card. I don't want to lose to Maelstrom Pulse or something like that. So, all right, opponent's just doing this. This is fine. Treetop Village, sure. All right, let's just draw a card. Once again, still still the same thing. I don't want to lose to I don't want to lose to a bunch of nonsense. So if the opponent has like Plague Engineer here, it would have wiped away all of our lingering souls. I guess we could have had the opponent at one last turn, but anyway. Awesome. Alright, so we got the 5-0 with the Pox list. Um, Alright. So we're back with our trophy winning deck list. I was really impressed by what it was able to do. I seriously don't think we have a great matchup against big mana, but we we did anyway. I mean, we were able to win. Uh, it was really exciting. So this is awesome. So just uh, like you, I said, this is a viewer submitted deck idea. So if you have any ideas, please email me flankattack27 mtgo at gmail.com. Uh, and maybe your next idea can be turned into a 5-0 deck list. Because I'm very happy with the way that this went. Uh, oh, also something to note, this deck's kind of budget too. It's only like 250 ticks, which is really cheap compared to most of the decks I play, which are usually about you know $600 or so, $600, $700. This one's only 250 So if you're looking to build something on Magic Online that's uh, you know pretty playable, we got cards that are for, you know all-star format in the format, like Liliana that you're buying and Thoughtseize. So it's not like you're just spending your money on anything. Um, all the money in this deck is built is into your, uh, you know, like, uh, format staples cards like lingering souls don't cost money you know uh flagstones are pretty cheap stuff like that you're not really spending money on cards that you'd only play in this deck all right um 
thanks for putting up with me with this really long video. Uh, happy to add another trophy to the uh, repertoire, and I'll uh, see you next time.